Now, before we start this video, I want you to keep my son in your thoughts and prayers. He's okay. Nothing's wrong with him. Just in an attempt to save some money, I gave him a haircut, and well, you know how that ended up. So one press of the like button is one thought, and hit the subscribe button is one prayer. If we all get our prayers together, I'll get his haircut professionally. Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and I wanted to start off and say I am truly sorry for the last video where I got pulled over. In a world where everything is fake, it's hard to tell what's real. Now, here are some hard pills to swallow. Number one, the ducks at the pond are not free. You cannot take them home with you. Number two, healing crystals will not cure any of your medical issues. Please see a licensed doctor or therapist. And also, your wife still thinks about her ex-boyfriend from time to time, and there's nothing you can do. But here's the last hard pill to swallow. I drove my unregistered Audi RS7 with no plates. I was pulled over, and the car was towed. That was 100% real. And I know everyone thought it was a lie and you wanted it to be clickbait so bad, but alas, reality is often disappointing. Maybe in your town you can pay cops to stand around for a photo shoot, but not in mine. They have better things to do. So they wanted me to show proof of ownership, and now everyone asks why the cop didn't just follow me home to get the registration. And well, you can't drive a car with no registration and no plates, so if he went to my house and I didn't have it, that'd be a waste of everyone's time. Also, when he ran the VIN, it showed up as the prior owner out of state, not the chicken farmer, but the owner before that, which also doesn't look good. So needless to say, the car had to get towed, and I take responsibility for that. Now, I've been reading all of your comments in the last video and taking extensive notes on all the important discussions, and the funniest comment I've seen so far was that how I've changed. Rich, you have changed. Now, you want to know how I know you're new to the channel? Because I'm the same sarcastic I've been since I started doing YouTube. At the end of my CyberQuad video, I told you to look at your wife in the eye and ask yourself, is she the prettiest woman in the world? The answer was no. Before that, I made a 20-minute video calling Tesla fanboy simps and translucent cave dwellers. Before that, I made a video on the Cybertruck, which I literally named Review from Tesla's Biggest Troll. Have you seen my take of the Roadster unveiling? <laughs> Three years ago, I told everyone at the end of the video, I made something for you. Take a bottle, fill it with salt, drill a hole in the cap, and put it in your to get the sand out. Now, to anyone that says I've changed, you are, in fact, a pine cone. Okay, let's get back to my Audi RS7. Now, when I got the car from the chicken farmer in Florida, I had two cars shipped up. Yes, I got the RS7 the same time as my Spark EV several months ago, but I've had the RS7 for a while and just kept it a secret. The total shipping cost to get both cars from Florida was $800. When I got the car, I had to repair the trunk. The trunk floor was $812, the tool organizer form was $46, the rear trim panel was $218, the rear trim carpeting was $180. Now, the chicken farmer gave me that carpeting piece, but it was pretty wet and oily after being in a wet trunk, so I threw it away, but had I known it would have cost $180 to replace, I would have happily kept it. The rear body panel was $326, the bottom panel and rear panels came to $1,582. Now, the car also needed new tires and miscellaneous interior trim and the powder coating, which came to $2,000. After I was done with that, I ordered an Audi service kit from FCP Euro, which includes an oil change, filter change, brake pads, and rotors for $3,000. But they have a lifetime warranty, so if anything goes wrong, I can return it. Yes, even the oil. So after that was the stage two maintenance of the last episode. That came to $500, which includes the coolant, hose clamps, vacuum fill tool, and gaskets. I also had to order a check valve from Audi, which was $100 for some odd reason. And then I bought a Windows laptop with VCDS, as well as an Autel device for a grand total of $1,000. Now let's get into the foo-foo stuff. I ordered a set of nice powder-coated red intakes for $1,000, bringing the grand total to $11,564. Removing the $1,000 intake, it brings it to about ten five, dollars which is still a ton of money for this car. But believe it or not, the least amount of money I spent on the car had the biggest impact I bought an RS7 manual on emanualonline.com for literally $12, and I was able to see whether or not I had to drain my coolant for when I needed to change the spark plugs. It turns out I did not, so for the low price of $12, I had a full service manual for the car, and it kept me from bashing my head against the wall on multiple occasions on how to do something. So if you look in the description box below, click on that link and use Rich Rebuilds for an additional 20% off, and you can get a car repair manual for pretty much any car. Look at their selection. It's huge. They have 50,000 plus manuals for just construction equipment. But either way, click on that link below and you get a car manual or anything else you could think of for pretty much next to nothing. Okay, so I'm in the BMW i8 right now and there's actually two charges I forgot to mention. 
The first charge was the car getting towed to the impound lot. That was two fifty, and getting it out was about another two hundred and fifty dollars. So that was a total of five hundred just to get the car back. I showed the proof of ownership and I had the title in my hand. Now here's the thing: is that one thing I didn't notice is that I looked at the ticket that I got again, and it shows you know, it was from a twenty fourteen Audi RS seven. Uh, there's no plate info because I didn't have the plate on the car. But I will say that uh, these charges that I got for a number plate violation and uninsured motor vehicle and unregistered motor vehicle, the top two are literal criminal charges. <laughs> so like this is this is actually a really, really big deal. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of funny that there was no actual fine to be paid uh, when I was going through this, but it's actually a pretty serious offense given those are criminals. So this could potentially face uh, some jail time here. So I'm gonna put that away. Uh, and I also got this summons in the mail too. And I thought it was adorable that it says, uh, thinking of you. Oh my gosh, how brilliant is that? Uh, the first thing I see is gender male. Literally, they don't know that. And there's three counts. So there's number plate violation, the conceal ID, uninsured motor vehicle, and unregistered motor vehicle. Now, I think the first count has a lot to do with, uh, I think it's any individual who obscures or permits figures on any number plate or fails to properly display the number and plate and register the number on a motor vehicle uh, can face fines of not more than $100, which is good, and then imprisonment of not more than 10 days. So, you know, whatever, you know, under 10 days of jail time, that's not too bad. Now, the uninsured motor vehicle is a fine of not less than 500, but not more than 5,000, and imprisonment of no more than one year in a house of corrections or both a fine and imprisonment. So that's kind of serious. I mean, I'm not really feeling going to jail, but again, you know what? You gotta, you did the crime, you gotta do the time, so I might get hauled away. Now the unregistered motor vehicle one is probably the most uh, serious one. Uh, for the first offense, you get a $500 fine uh, and you could receive jail time of up to 12 months. Your driver's license is suspended for 60 days and you have to go to a driver's license reinstatement fee of $500 to get it back. Combining these three, that's kind of serious. This is actually a, a, a big a big deal here, you know? Um, but again, you know, I did it. I messed up big time. I gotta, I gotta pay the price. I gotta pay the iron price. Yeah, this is kind of serious, guys. I mean, look at me. I'm wearing a mask in, in, in my own backyard, pretty much, because the last thing I need is for someone to call the police on me saying that there's a gentleman not wearing a mask in a mask required zone. And look at these tiny ears. I have tiny minuscule ears and the mask could barely fit on my face. My glasses are always falling off, but yeah, this is highly unfortunate. But again, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Uh, I don't have any prior records. You know, I don't think I have any speeding tickets even. So what I want to talk to you about today is talking about uh, asset liquidation. Okay, so just in case I have to unload a couple of things, I have to get rid of the I-8 you know, to uh, to pay some of these fines. Okay, I got the I-8, I got the Mini Cooper. Uh, just keep that stuff in mind. I may have to sell some of that stuff. Uh, I got, got to start looking at a contingency plans now. And the contingency plan is I have to find a new person, you know, to take over the household and all that good stuff, find a new a new dad for the kids, you know, maybe a white dad or something. So mix things up a little bit, you never know. You got to keep it shaking. So... <laughs> so... They might like their new dad. You never know. But yeah, those are the fines. So um, I'm up to about maybe like $500 in towing fees. I did get the car back. You know, I had proof of, of, of ownership of the car because I literally do own it. But now it's a matter of figuring out the whole court system thing and, uh, and, and seeing where things go from there. But again, you know, you might see Uncle Rich picking up trash at the side of the highway. All right. I might be in community service. You're going to see me with that same, you know, Thanos hand, the Infinity Gauntlet picking up trash to the side of the road uh, because, you know, I got excited, drove the car uh, without doing my proper due diligence first. But this is what happens, boys and girls. You know, you just, you know, I met I met the strong hand of the law and this is what happens. And again, I'm not playing the victim because a lot of people think, oh, he's playing the victim. Da, 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 da. You're a fool. You're a pine cone. Okay. You're a literal pine cone. So one last thing. So I'm going to be making my final appearance before I get hauled off to jail. Uh, this coming weekend in Ocala, Florida, we're opening up our second location for Electrified Garage. So I'm going to have a link to that. It's totally free if you want to show up and uh, and see me off before they carry me off in cuffs. Uh, basically, that a link to the event bright is below in the description box. Again, this is not Rich discusses his court proceedings. This is Rich Rebuild. So Stephen and I actually take a seat in the car. I go over it and I give you my thoughts on it. 
and uh, you let me know what you guys think. Now it's not completely done yet. I still have to- uh, Like it's missing a plate? Yeah, the, the plate, for example. Uh, but the car is gonna get wrapped. You know, I have to go with my typical color theme, uh, a matte color of some sort to match the i8 and, and, and the Model S. So a couple of things I wanted to address. I remember in the first couple of videos, there were some complaints about how the rotors were facing the wrong direction. And, you know, I thought so too. I was kind of annoyed about that. Then I realized uh, after I called the manufacturer, uh, they have these directional arrows on it, meaning they're directional. You could kind of go back or forward. It doesn't really matter what direction the veins are facing. And they said it should be fine. It shouldn't cause too much of a difference for heat wear. So I just said, you know what, forget it. Rather than ordering new rotors again and swapping those out, you know, there's no point. What I might do is uh, because FCP Euro has a lifetime warranty, what I'll do is after these rotors get to the end of their usable life, I'll swap them out for the opposite pair just so it looks a little bit better. So again, coming up next are some uh, more modifications to it. I'll be wrapping it again, like I said, and I also want to take it to the track. So there's going to be a track video coming up where I just see just how quick the car is because, you know, there's a lot of speculation about, okay, the car has a lot of power, but it's super heavy and they only run like mid tens or so. The goal is to go lower than mid 10, but I mean, what we're really going to have to see, I really want it to be uh, just as, just as quick as a, as a Model S, you know, as a P100D. So the P100D run about 10.5 or 10.4 and a quarter at about 126 miles an hour. So as long as my mile an hour is higher than that, I'll feel a lot better, but you never know. I don't really know how, how the car was modified, how well that went, or what state the tune is in, if the tone's, the tune's even loaded. So we're gonna see, I'll be calling APR, figuring that out. I had the intakes on, I mean, this thing is ready. It's ready to rock. One thing I realized is that I've never actually given a car a review before. You know how normally like people have cars, the YouTubers like, hey, let's go this car, it's cool, and you rebuild it, and you never hear from it again? Funny how that works. Notice that, notice like all your favorite YouTubers, like they fix a car and you never see it again. But this is one of the times that I wanna, I'll be driving this car as my primary driver for a while, so I wanna give it a quick review. And like my initial thoughts on it versus, you know, other cars I've had in the past. And I will say, the Audi driving system, the menus, it's they're not as intuitive as the Teslas are. Like it's it's just not. And I feel like for years I've been very spoiled uh, having a very intuitive and easy to use system. Obviously everything's very easy after you've used it for a while, but I feel like getting into the car into a Tesla Model S for the first time, you can easily figure out a lot of the menus and like what certain things do. With the MMI in the Audi, it's not nearly as intuitive. Like for example, you have comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual for different drive modes, but what do they do? Like comfort, you know, okay, it's probably more comfortable. Auto, it switches between modes. Dynamic and individual, there's no real obvious explanation as to what those things do. Yeah, you go into the sub menus and figure it out, but it'd be nice to have like a little pop-up window that says, hey, this is what this does. Whereas if you click on individual and push that right there, So you, you push individual, you don't know what you just did. You know, uh, the arrow's going up. I know what that means. I know the, the car is getting higher on its own, but you know, that's not obvious to a lot of people, you know? Uh, also lower, like, okay, lower. I don't really know, like how low is it gonna go? Like, what does that mean? I it, it's, it's tough. So if you go to individual, uh, you could, I'm assuming that means you could set the individual settings. So all of these are customizable, which is cool, but the engine transmission, there's another menu that says comfort, auto, and dynamic. So it's like a continuous loop of confusion because I didn't know what that meant here, but I go to a sub menu, I still don't know what that means. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's weird, right? So now, all right, go back to the car. And then, so let's just say like I go to comfort, I could change every setting everywhere. It's the same thing. So you all, it's almost like you have four presets. Like your little click wheel here. You yeah, that's, a, you that's, got a mouse and keyboard. Yeah, too. that's, <laughs> that, 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 that's kind of, I guess it's kind of neat, but. Is it though? Eh, it's all right. But no, it's, it's again, very, very interesting. And just to think, uh, I, I hate to make this like a Tesla comparison video, but this is a 2014. My Model S came out in 2012. And this interior, I feel it's cool. Carbon fiber, luxurious, lots of buttons. At night, they light up red, which is very futuristic, very awesome looking. But 
it's kind of already outdated compared to the Tesla. The, the Teslas are constantly evolving, constantly improving, improving. And, you know, you could change a menu in the Tesla subsystem because it's all touchscreen. Like, it, it's funny. I was watching uh, not too long ago the, um, remember the Apple introduction? Uh, the Apple iPhone introduction, the very first iPhone, when he compared the Apple iPhone, as chintzy as it was, it had no buttons on it, mm -hmm. and he compared it to every other phone of that generation. All those buttons were on it, and as time went on, as improvements were made and certain apps were changed, all those buttons became obsolete. You know what I mean? And, like, I see this happening here already. Like, there's there's a lot of redundancy uh, with a lot of the buttons that we have here. There's, I mean, just in this small area alone, there's, like, 20 buttons. <sighs> You know, but like, but again, <laughs> but, but but again, like, when you know the car well enough, these things don't matter. But I mean, at night when I'm driving this car, there's a lot going on. It looks like a fighter jet, which is cool as hell. But there's a lot of buttons. You know, there's there's really a lot going on, and I, I definitely have to admire the simplicity of of Tesla's the Model Three, Model S, Model X. But yeah, I will say like it's 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 definitely interesting. You know, when you when you have a nice hot date. And you bring a girl in the car, she's like, oh my God, it's so cool. Like, she's going to be impressed by it. But, you know, me being the person that I am, I'll look at this and say, yeah, this is cool. But, you know, a, a lot of the uh, the Tesla stuff is a little bit more. Shut your screen. Show everybody how impressive that yeah, is. Yeah, ready? Ready? You... Uh, Hold on. Oh. I'm going to do it. Oh, look at that. It's not even. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oof. See, it's a little, like, jagged in a way, you know? But, again, the speakers coming up are very cool. Ooh, uh, yeah. But the, you know, the, if you do the speaker thing, let's do that. That's that's a flex. That's cool. That's definitely cool. But yeah, but but again, I'll go this again. What what does this mean? Engine sound, comfort. What's a comfort engine sound? It's not offensive, I guess. Like I don't. I, again, I could be looking at the wrong menus. This is the first time I'm really getting to know this car. It's a soft coup. But I don't actually. Really... Let's hear it. <laughs> what is a comfort engine set? Yeah, I don't... seriously. The other thing I like about this car is its power. The power is phenomenal. The sound is awesome. Uh, I like a lot about this car, and um, the pops and bangs are cool. But I'm getting old, and the pops and bangs are cool. But after some time, it kind of gets old, so I have to switch into this, the normal mode. So I like having the ability to do both which is helpful. Like on the Z06, I have um, the exhaust flaps that open for, for more or less noise. It, the sound does kind of get old after a while. Either way, I could shut that off, so that, that's a moot point. Um, but I'll tell you, one thing I'm not feeling about the driving experience, the power is great, I'll say that again, is the it doesn't handle anywhere near as well as the i8 does. This is a big car, it's floaty. I feel like it's clumsy and awkward. What's it weigh compared to the i8? This car, I think, weighs 4,500 pounds. And my my Model S, uh, single motor, rear wheel drive, weighs about maybe 42 to 4,300. So it makes you think, even though the Tesla has that massive battery pack and that huge motor in the back, it lets you know that the design of that car was such that it's still pretty damn light. You know, they, they were they were doing a lot in terms of cost cutting and weight savings. And the Audis, they just don't even care. Like I've I've removed the front bumper and rear bumper off this car. The front bumper in this car weighs a ton. It weighs a ton. And you can tell that this technology that they use in this car is already behind because you know, Tesla has parking sensors. You don't even see the sensors anymore. Mm -hmm. Or the front bumper of a model three. Where are the sensors? Or or model S. You don't see anything. You know, I mean, and they've done a good job making it so stealth that, you know, the the car is it's it's timeless. I got to give after driving this car for a while, I have to give Tesla even more respect. But as of right now, with this air suspension, the car just feels it feels very big. And I almost feel like this car needs every single, you know, ounce of horsepower that it has. You know, so let's go for a quick drive. What appears to be the problem? I pressed the pressing the start button, it's not working. I put 
us in the break. Start. Why is that crying? It's just clicking. You got a dead battery, don't you? Yeah. Oh. Uh, you didn't uh, oh, it get it together. Oh. <laughs> All right, well. Let's go assess that. Mm -hmm. We could. Got a solution? Mini doesn't work. Uh, the i8 probably can't even jump a car if I tried. Uh, no. Oh, you know what? Oh, you know what I got? No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And that god awful beeping off. Now, this is the charger I'm gonna use. The Gulu is great. It has really nice, high quality jumper cables. And also, it has four bars to tell you how charged it is USB C in and out charging, and also two USB ports, one with higher amperage charging, and also a flashlight. So, we're gonna try this and then see how good it is for starting the car. Okay. All right, those are hooked up, and it says it's correct. Let's go for it. Very cool. Very, very cool. I'm gonna bring this new wherever I go now, man. This is awesome. Now, in terms of the overall driving experience, like the uh, the steering wheel, for example, this steering wheel, it's too small. I wish it was a lot more, th more thickly bolstered, you know what I mean? But this is kind of a small steering wheel. I mean, it's small, which is good, but just like holding on to it and like the meatiness of it is just not there. I feel like this would do really well on a long road trip, on like a long straight road. Like the Autobahn, you could just floor it and you just go from there. Around town, around the city, wrestling this, you know, 4,500 pound car around, that can't be fun. Whenever you start this car, it's always a show. Which is, I mean, it's kind of cool, but I could see that getting old after a while. Whenever you start the car, there's always this loud backfire that you heard in, <laughs> in the prior videos. And I don't know if you could shut that off or not. It might have to grow on me. It's like everything else, you know, everything has to, you know, grow on some people. Some people love it right away, and I don't love this right away. And thinking about it, I didn't love my Tesla right away either. It was only when I started driving other cars that I appreciated it more. And the same thing with the i8. It's, at first I didn't love it, but it's a very comfortable car. It's smooth, it's comfortable, it has exotic looks. Uh... Value-wise, minus the back seats, I would probably drive the i8 over this car. Seriously. So, cry all you want. It's the truth. Never meet your heroes. <laughs> uh, well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this episode. The RS7 is cool, but I think I'll need some more time to get used to it. It's currently at my friends over at Automotive Specialty Wraps in New Jersey. The same team that wrapped my i8 for SEMA, they're going to work their magic on this car as well with a fresh color change. Subscribe, please, for more RS7 content. And after the car is done, I'll be taking it to the track. And then next week, I'll be visiting the salvage yard for my next project at IAA. Got to keep it moving, baby. I will see you guys next week.